stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pursuant to the general provisions, Article Section 3-305 and Section 3-104, the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County will meet in a closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom this public body has jurisdiction. Any other personnel matter that affects one or more specific individuals, to consult with counsel to obtain legal advice and to consult with staff, consultants, or other individuals about pending or potential litigation. Thank you. Okay, can I get a movement to approve the agenda as presented? Make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Second. All approved. Aye. A approval of minutes. Can I get a, a motion to approve the May 3rd closed session minutes? I make a motion to approve the closed sessions for May the 3rd and open sessions for May 3rd. Second. All approved. Aye. 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 Can we get a motion to approve the May 3rd open session minutes? I was at the meeting, so I'm going to abstain on this one. She said the 3rd, not the 17th. He actually did both. I thought, I thought we did both just <laughs> He did a motion to open and close at the same Okay, so all right. Skip that one. Let's just 17. skip and go to 17th and close session and open session minutes. I make a motion to approve. Second. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. <laughs> Thank you, um, mm -hmm. Vice President. Yes. Um, so this evening we have lots of familiar and friendly faces in the audience, and I would like to actually um, call up Dr. Bernie Sadusky, former superintendent of Queen Anne's County Public Schools, for a proclamation. So this, uh, does this work here? Yeah. Right. You gotta turn it on, Dr. So I have the uh, honor to read this whereas, whereas, and whereas <laughs> before, but before we get started. Um, I wanna thank the board for taking time to honor this person who is really one of the icons of education in Queen Anne's County. Um, Mildred and I go back a long time. Uh, when I was a young principal in the late 70s uh, in Southersville, uh, Mildred Casey had just left being president of the PTA, but she was very active in uh, the PTA itself. And uh, she stopped in to see me, and, and she uh, wanted to tell me what a great place Southersville was. And basically how lucky I was to be able to come to Southersville, told me that this was a place of great pride of Southersville High School and the heritage in the community, and also wanted to assure me that they, the community would support me because they were all about their students. And I also think, because I was replacing Pat Biddle, a legend in Southersville, that she wanted to see if they made the right choice. <laughs> and um, and, and uh, hopefully uh, her opinion was that they did make the right choice. And we got to work together. And one of the things that I will tell you, that there was no harder worker than Mildred Casey. If you don't know Southersville, uh, you need to know that it's a community of great pride and that the PTA led by Mildred Casey and so forth, one night in the fall would have a harvest fair talking in the 70s when teachers made $6,500, all right? And on that Friday night, people like Mildred Casey would raise $5,000 in two and a half hours to give to the school to make sure the students weren't without all the other things that their parents could not uh, afford. I mean, it was, it was just amazing feat, and there was great trust, and there was great support for students, but also great support or the teachers. Mildred was active in county council PTAs. She also had students that went on to Queen Anne County High School, very active with the band, very active with the PTA. And that led her to great things at the state level. 
So if you went to a state meeting, and, and when you, the first thing, well, do you know Mildred Casey? Well, yes, I do. And the nice thing about it is knowing Mildred, every place, everybody in the state knew Queen Anne's County. And we were a small district at that time. Had about 4,000 students, now have much more. But everybody could associate Queen Anne's County because Mildred was telling the good story. She was preaching the gospel about what a great place this was. What, about, what a great place, what great students we had. No wonder the governor then decided to appoint her to the Queen Anne County School Board because she had all the experience. She knew the students, she knew the parents, she knew the communities. And as a school board member, I was fortunate because she is one of the people, the other two, and there are two people missing that hired me as superintendent. And we had a great working relationship. And the working relationship was this. All of our decisions were based on, is it good for students? Not, not about, the, is it good for the commissioners, or is it good for somebody in Baltimore? Is it good for the students in Queen Anne's County? And Mildred fed, uh, uh, led that fight. And so when we look back at all the great things that happened in Queen Anne's County, anytime a student was recognized, anytime a team was successful, anytime our uh, performance scores came out, Mildred was happy because she was so proud, she was so invested that we have the finest students. That's what you need in a school board member. And we had a great team of school, uh, uh, call it a team of uh, board members that were absolutely committed to making sure, regardless of where you lived, whether you lived in Roman Coke or where you lived in Crompton, students are going to be treated the same and they're going to get a really good educational experience. So it is no wonder that you've taken the time to honor her today. Never give a former superintendent a microphone. <laughs> okay, so whereas Mildred Casey has been a, li a lifelong resident of Queen Anne's County, whereas Mildred Casey was a Queen Anne's County Board of Education member for 10 years from 1989 to 1999, Whereas Mildred Casey won MABE's 1998 Charles W. Willis Award for Outstanding School Board Service in 1998. Remember that night? Whereas Mildred Casey has been an active member and volunteer for several parent teacher associations, Van Boosters, Social Service Board, Southernsville Volunteer Fire Company Ladies Auxiliary, Queen Anne's County Children's Council, Boy Scouts of America and Southern School Alumni Association. Now, therefore, we, the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County, wish Mildred Casey a very happy 99th birthday and thank her for her many years of devoted service to the students and residents of Queen Anne's County. And it's signed by all of the board members. Let's give her a round of applause. Love a child, you're my friend. <laughs> and the wonderful family I have, and the wonderful board members that serve, and I did, and Dick Smith was one of them. <laughs> and he's still hanging in there. <laughs> <laughs> and we just had such wonderful times and wonderful people to work with in the county and the teachers and the principals were above level. It was just wonderful. And I want to thank every one of you for coming. It's been great to see my friends. Thank you. Yeah.
I'd like to also introduce two other board members, uh, Becky and Liz Broderick. Becky Berner are two board members that serve with Miss Casey. Uh, uh, some of you know Elsie Lawrence, he was there, Madeline Hollis. Uh, it was an honor. Um, I learned a lot from Miss Casey. Sometimes she won't admit it, but we didn't see eye to eye every time. <laughs> but, she, but she schooled me well. So uh, that's what happened, board members. That's what happened to me. But thank you, Miss Casey, for everything you've done. And I'd also like to say, Marty, a teacher in Queen Anne's County for what, 40 years? So that's, you know, dedication. Now I have my husband with me tonight, Joseph, and Michael, my son, and Casey, my daughter. My other son couldn't make it. He, um, he's taking some classes tonight. And my good friend, Janet Pauls, came. <laughs> she's covering her face, but she's a good friend. So thank you very much. This was quite an honor for my mom. So next, we'd like to welcome up our supervisor of instruction, Mr. Michael Page. Thank you. All right, welcome everybody. Uh, today, I have the honor of giving the awards for um, the Agricultural Awareness Day essay contest. And I have two uh, committee members with me today. I have Ms. Lee Bridgman from the University of Maryland's Extension Office, and I have Ms. Jessica Clark from Horizon Farm Credit, and I also would like to recognize Ms. Jenny Rhodes from the University of Maryland's Extension Office, and Janelle McHenry from Thompson's Agriculture Consulting. They were a part of uh, helping to um, develop the program, and we've worked together for about six years uh, in order to have the students come to the 4-H Park for Agricultural Awareness Day. Agriculture Awareness Committee planned a sixth annual Agriculture Awareness Day uh, in April with all seventh grade students. The program utilized the Next Generation Science Standards, the Maryland Environmental Literacy Standards to educate students about agriculture. With the use of educational stations throughout the day, our students explored numerous agricultural topics and participated in hands-on experience at each station. At the conclusion of the event, each student was asked to participate in the Agriculture Awareness Day essay contest. Uh, each school had a first, second, and third place winner, and then there was also an overall winner for the county. The question they had to answer in their essay was, how does agriculture affect your life every day? And it was a one-page paper or a uh, two to three minute video or PowerPoint the students could submit. 
And first prize gets Apple AirPods, an ice cream cone, or a snow cone every day at the county fair. <laughs> <laughs> the second place winners get a $50 gift card, ice cream cones, and snow cones every day at the county fair. And the third place winners get $25 and three free ice cream cones and snow cones at the county fair. <laughs> All right, so we're actually gonna start off with the overall winner this year. The overall winner this year is from S Stevensville Middle School, and his name is Nathan Durant. Come on up, Nathan. And we have Dr. Schreckengoss. The principal with us is Dr. Schreckengoss, if you wanna come up for a quick picture with Nathan, we can all squeeze in and come on over here, Nathan. Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay, ready? All right. All right, ready? One, two, go. Sweet. Thank you. Congratulations, Nathan. Good job. He's an overall winner for the county. All right, we're going to make our way to Centerville Middle School, and we'll start off with third place with uh, Clayton Caladine. Come on up, Clayton. Congratulations. Second place at Centerville Middle School. Was Jolie Earls? Come on up. Congratulations. And first place goes to Cooper Reed. Come on up. And we'll take a real quick picture with you all. Congratulations, Centerville Middle School. All right, congratulations to you all. Now we have Stevensville Middle School. With third place, we have Christina Bordinsky. Is she here tonight? Okay. Uh, then we have second place is Juliana Morissette. Congratulations. And then first place, we have Charlotte Poole. Come on. Congratulations. And we, is, do, wait, yeah, Dr. Schreckengus, come on up again. All right, and Southersville Middle School. Third place, we have Madeline Marco. There she is. Come on up, Madeline. Second place, we have Willow Winterstein. Congratulations. And first place, we have Connor Evans. Congratulations. All right, congratulations to you all, and thank you to the Maryland Extension Office and the Agricultural Awareness Committee for helping us out with this. Wonderful job.
Thank you, Mr. Page. So moving on to other recognitions, the next award is given to a staff member or volunteer who keeps on going. It is sponsored by Bayview Financial with Mr. Chip Brittingham and Mr. Wayne Humphreys, if you'll please come forward. And I'd also like to ask Principal McNeil to please come forward as this is her nomination. So this month's Energizer Bunny is Dorothea Hanna, Hanner. If she could please come forward. So Dorothea is the permanent substitute for Settlersville Elementary School and is always on the go each day. Each morning, she stops in the office to see where she is needed and is always asking where she can help out. There are days where she may start in pre-K classroom, then move to fourth grade, and then on to unified arts classes. Since spring break, she's actually been serving as a long-term music teacher and has done a wonderful job engaging our students in music. Her motivation, flexibility, enthusiasm, and energy make her a great fit for this award. So congratulations. next award is our Shining Star Award. This award recognizes someone in our school system who shines, and this award this month goes to Missy Darling. <laughs> Missy is retiring after 34 years Woo! dedicated to Queen Anne's County Public Schools. All 34 of those years were at Sudlersville Elementary School as a first grade teacher. During her time at Sudlersville Elementary School, Missy always demonstrated empathy and compassion for her students. Missy is dedicated to ensuring students are receiving the best education possible and is always looking for new ways to help her students succeed. Missy will greatly be missed at Sudlersville Elementary School by the staff, students, and the community. We know that she will be remembered as a shining star at Sudlersville. And our last award this evening is the Queen Anne's County Public School Spirit Award. This award is given to an individual who embodies the spirit of Queen Anne's County Public Schools. And tonight, I would like to welcome up Rachel Wagner. <laughs> Rachel is the math specialist at Sutledgeville Elementary School, but you can always say she is the party planner for our school. <laughs> Rachel loves to plan spirit weeks for students and staff, and she made sure that Sutledgeville Elementary School had a winter concert when our music teacher had left. Prior to MCAP, which is our Maryland testing, Rachel planned a pep rally that included all grade levels. During the testing period, she planned for grade levels that were not testing to cheer on those that were testing and provide treats to the third and fourth graders. Rachel is all about keeping positive morale at Sellersville Elementary School, and we thank you for that. Congratulations. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That's 
are always fun. It is. Actually, like the best time of the meetings. I know. Yeah. I know, especially when she started talking. Oh, so sweet. Yes. Yeah, that is the best part of the meetings. Now we get to go play in Okay, let's move on to board involvement. Um, Ms. Capes, you want to start? I just would like to congratulate everybody, all the graduates and all the other um, students that are excelling into the next grade level um, and have a nice summer. Okay, nice. I'd like to give a congratulations to both Queen Anne's County High School graduates and Ken Allen. Uh, for successful graduation from Queen Anne's County Public Schools. I also attended uh, field day and fifth grade advancement at Kennard. Um, it's been a great year, a lot of smiling faces. A uh, year ago, we just getting over COVID. Now I think we're getting back to a more normal time where you see kids out there with a smile and enjoying themselves. And I'd like to give a thanks from me and the whole board to the teachers, the administrative staff, uh -huh. and our support people who had a very successful year. I can say I'm proud of this year and what we've accomplished and what we're looking forward to this fall. Thank you. Um, in addition to the both high school graduations, I also attended with Dr. Salins, the fire and EMS graduations. Those were awesome. Um, I was happy that we had three students from Ken Island and Queen Anne's that did that graduation. I hope that we will have more next year so those that are interested sign up it was wonderful and i just want to add my congratulations to everybody for a successful year i too feel like we accomplished a lot and i imagine uh, dr kibler would agree i'd like to thank the um, citizen advisory com um, committee they just finished their year and you know i'm so grateful for everyone who's always so willing to get involved when it comes to the kids in the community so i want to thank them for their involvement <coughs> and that would be it so, Dr. Sands. Yes, and ditto everything that the board is saying. <laughs> that was what was going through my mind, just a congratulations to our students who are moving on to the next chapter, but also thank you, huge shout out to our teachers, administrators, all staff members who every day make it right for our kids and make sure that they are successful in what they do. So, thank you, and I hope everybody has a, a fantastic, relaxing break. All right, uh, Dr. Sprankle, I know you've always got fun stuff to oh, show us. so much. Good afternoon or good evening. I'd say Vice President Bennett. Okay. Dr. Salins. Board members. Executive team members. I am Dr. Marcia Sprankle for the record and it is my pleasure to be able to share with you our spotlight for Queen Anne's County Public Schools for last month and also the start of this month. So we will go ahead and get started here. First up, we have Centralville Elementary School. Second grade students visited the Baltimore Zoo and had a blast. Pre-K students and preschool classes worked together to create a kindness garden out of recycled tires. Students painted the tires and planted the donated flowers. Kindergarten students painted words of kindness with pictures during art class. There was also a kindness lesson that went along with every activity. Students in grades K to two made kindness bags for the local first responders. 
The first responders visited Centralville Elementary School and returned to let them see some of their equipment and vehicles. So kudos to Centralville Elementary School. Next up, we have Churchill Elementary School. Churchill Elementary School is proud of their student work and enjoys showing it off actually in the hallway, bulletin boards there at the school. If you have a chance to visit Churchill Elementary School, if you've had a chance to walk through, you'll see these fabulous bulletin boards and also attach, you will see the standards. So families can support their students by understanding what's being taught in the classrooms. So if you haven't had a chance to visit Churchill Elementary School, that's what's happening when you walk around in the building. And so hopefully one day you can visit soon. Next up, we have Kent Island Elementary School. Pictured here, you can see the Kent Island Elementary School staff in their squad shirts. A gift from Mrs. Cornish was given to all of staff members for teacher appreciation or staff, I should say, appreciation week. Ms. Gardner's kindergarten class participated in Glow Day, and you can see they are shining bright for sure with their glow sticks for sure. Collaborative, a collaborative mural was inspired by street artist Kelsey Montag. Every Kent Island elementary student created a feather. So look at all those feathers. What a nice background. Next up, we have Mattapeak Middle School. The eighth grade dance was a hit at Mattapeak Middle School. The theme was get on board. It reminds me of get on board Soul Train, right? <laughs> Class of 2027, Dr. McCoy, the principal, and also Mr. Ed France, counselor, are pictured on the slide there. And they're having lots of fun with the students. Next up, we have Kent Island High School. Additional photos from Kent Island High School's art scene. Students gave live demonstrations, showcasing several art techniques, hosted portfolio booths, and the National Honor Society held their fifth induction. Congratulations, Kent Island students. Again, Kent Island High School, I had the lovely pleasure, I will say, to attend Ms. Wright's uh, dance performance that took place. It was magnificent, for sure. The theme was city lights, and boy, did we see those city lights in the auditorium. It was a fun and energetic display of talent showcasing several styles of dance, including student choreographers, dance students, aerobics, and the dance company performed as well. Also at Kent Island High School, the National Social Studies Honor Society, Rho Kappa, has been collecting donations of unused clothing for the Blue Ribbon Project, an organization that provides clothes to children that have been put into foster care. Kudos to our Kent Island students for sure. It's a great way to help the community and it's also approved in a, an approved service learning project as well. On the right, Kent Island High School has focused on several initiatives to support positive mental health among students, including clubs, Wellness Wednesday, and Green Ribbon activities for Mental Health Awareness Month. Next, we have Churchill Elementary School's Jer Judy Center, of course. Okay, students at the Judy Center, Early Learning Hub at Churchill Elementary School provides a play group four to five times a week that includes weekly social emotional lessons with their pre-K classes. Can you tell what emotion is being depicted in this photo? All the services are free and of course they are fun. It was a beautiful and sunny morning for the Kent Island High School class of 2023. Congratulations to all of our graduates at Kent Island High School. The Queen Anne's High School class of 2023 graduates had a picture perfect day 
for a graduation ceremony. Congratulations to all of the graduates at Queen Anne High School. And that concludes our spotlight for the month. Thank you, Dr. Sprinkle. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. OK, we're moving into the citizen participation. Do we have anyone sign up for public comments? I think we have two. Yeah, we Sorry. Have two. We ask all speakers to keep in mind the following guidelines. Speakers should sign the roster, including their telephone number and address. Comments should be limited to three minutes in length. Comments longer than three minutes should be submitted in writing. Statements to the board should relate to a matter of general policy over which the board has authority. Comments about the actions or statements of individual staff members are not appropriate for public comments and should be referred to the superintendent of schools or the board president. If you have a specific question, the board will make sure an appropriate staff member responds to your question. The board respects your desire and right to convey your message freely, but ask as a courtesy to this board and our citizens that to show respect for all. First on the list is Richard McNeil. Good evening, board members, uh, Richard McNeil. I live in, uh, on White Marsh Road, at least when I left there tonight, it was still on White Marsh Road. So um, I'd like to extend our gratitude to the board for recognizing uh, Mildred and uh, all her services. I uh, transferred to this school district in Queen Anne's County in 1980. And one of the first people that I got involved with in 1981 was Mildred Casey. And she has been sharing her wisdom with everybody and me ever since, and we've enjoyed her presence at our retirement luncheon. So I wish her well. And uh, I hope that when I'm 99, Dick, I don't want to be president of the retirement group. Okay, so <laughs> just mention that. Um, we would like to uh, just recognize two of our scholarship uh, winners that we supported at Ken Island High School. Uh, I'll mention their first name is Catherine and Queen Anne's, it's Emily. Uh, we're going to recognize them on Tuesday at our luncheon uh, this coming Tuesday. So we're hopeful for them to finish up in four years so they can be hired by, as the teachers by our group um, right here on that part. Uh, for, on behalf of the retirement group, we'd like to thank Dr. Uh, Salins and her staff for the wonderful year. Um, I had the opportunity to visit a couple of the schools this past week to see some people who are retiring and ask them how the year went. And, um, you know, as, as Dick, as you said, the idea of getting back into a routine from COVID is still ongoing. And, uh, but they all said that, um, that the students were more focused this year than they have been in the past couple of years and for good reason. So we hope we don't go through that again. Um, I'm looking forward to greeting many of the retirees on the 21st. Uh, thank you for the invitation and uh, we're looking forward to inviting them in. If you've been watching some of the news shows, there's, there's been a couple specials on the mental health of students. And, um, you know, this, this has got to be a concern for parents and educators. Uh, one of the ones most recently was the idea of how many students and children are being impacted by social media, uh, even starting at nine and 10 years old. And, um, and, and, you know, a lot of that is, I think is my personal feeling. Parents need to step up and, and you know, be careful of what their, uh, their children, are, how much time they're spending on that. And uh, I know it's a challenge for schools to deal with that and that's not what they're supposed to be dealing with. They're supposed to be dealing with the educational part of that. So um, have a good summer for all the people in the schools and uh, I'll see you all in July probably. So thank you. Thank and you. Again, thank you for uh, Mildred Casey's. That was wonderful. Chris Blanton.
Good evening, Chris Blanton, Church Hill. Um, first, I'd like to start off by saying I think it's unfortunate that we change the rules uh, after I ask questions and we don't want to answer them, and then we change it to just comments in the rules. I think that's unfortunate, and I think as voters, we should be able to ask questions, and elected officials should be able to answer them. I'm again here to speak on the $20 million Board of Education building that should not be built. We don't need to be spending $20 million on a Board of Education building. I'd like to thank Ms. Bennett and Ms. Capes for acknowledging that the Board of Education building should not override children and that it's not needed. I think that's what we need to do is get rid of it. Mr. Smith, unfortunately, you know, we're worried about how the Board of Education building now doesn't have any vestibules. I think that's unfortunate because when was the last Board of Education shooting? 2010, and I think that was the only one. We have a problem with school shootings. That's what we have a problem with, not Board of Education shootings, but yet we're worried about the safety of our Board of Education. Some of the comments that Ms. Salins made was Dr. that the- Dr. Salins, thank you. Dr. Salins. Yeah, Dr. S and just be careful. Dr. We, Salins, okay, I apologize. It's that it is, it is, it is a management team that it is basically, we're talking about the ivory tower now. Yeah. So well, now we're, we're spending- we're not, it's- we, Okay. It's just not, when we talk My about respecting, trying. it's just not to call out individual members, and it does say that also in the, in the rules still, is to not call out specific members and to be okay. respectful. Well, we shouldn't be spending $20 million on a Board of Education that's, building. And that's There's a lot of say. money, there's a lot of things that we could spend $20 million on. Capital projects on school roofs that need to be fixed. Keeping our kids and your educators safe. You know how much how we could keep our, how, how much money could be used to keep our kids safe? We could have one of the safest counties if you spent that $20 million on a board of education, instead of on a board of education building, building it on infrastructure and capital projects on safety things within the schools. So that when we go into these schools, we don't have to look at trauma kits on the walls. Instead, we can know that our children are safe. $20 million is unacceptable when we have other things that need to be done with our, with our school system on maybe 100 people. Again, that's $200,000 per an employee. Imagine how much that could go into the schools. We have kids learning in trailers. Again, take those trailers, put them in a cornfield, and you guys can go work in those. There's your brand new Board of Education building again. I just saved you again 98%. And we can keep our kids, your voters, taxpayers, your educators safe. We shouldn't be spending this money on a Board of Education building that's not necessary when these kids aren't safe, when schools need roofs. One thing that I remember that I just heard is that you guys just recognized an individual said, it's, if it's good for the students in Queen Anne's County, it's good for everyone. Explain to me how spending $20 million on a Board of Education building is good for Queen Anne's County students when they are learning in trailers and they don't have, they need roofs that need to be replaced. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Blunt. Anyone else signed up? Anyone else want to speak? Any other speakers at this time? Okay, then I believe we're gonna learn about English language learners staffing plan from Mrs. Cox. try and bring this up. Good evening, Dr. Salins, members of the board. For the record, I'm Cheryl Cox. I'm the supervisor of, tonight I'm the supervisor of ESOL. So I'm here to talk to you about our English our learner staffing plan for next year. I wanted to start out by giving some positive to my 10 ESOL teachers who have given their heart and soul this year and have a very, had a very successful year. They really, you know, when I imagine a student walking into our schools and new to the country, can't speak the language, they have created a safe place for them as that first line of, of uh, relationship. So I'm thankful to them. So my purpose here tonight is to give you an overview of our draft. Everything is draft because as you know, the things are ever changing. Um, enrollments continue to roll in from other countries. So everything changes on the daily. As of today, we had 408 ESOL students in our district at this time. 
So I did put there um, at the bottom just our obligation, and we feel this, and our ESOL teachers feel this every day. They are going to make sure that those students get all the supports they need to be successful in school. So for the coming year, we still have 10 teachers, no additional staff at this time, although I will talk a little bit about how we are readjusting some things within those 10 teachers. Um, we're hoping within the grants that we have to continue to have four grant funded tutors for five hours a day to support pushing in to the content areas classes to give those um, our ESOL students those supports that they need in those classes. At this time, ESOL in pre-K, we don't service students in pre-K. It's not federally mandated, but I wanted to put that in there because we still look out for those kids. We know that we need to take care of them the moment they walk in our doors. So while our ESOL teachers are not servicing them directly, we are consulting with the pre-K teachers to make sure they know what English language learners need because we know we need to worry about KRA scores and preparing them for kindergarten. So our plan, again, draft as of today, is um, attached. The one um, big change that I wanted to point out to you is currently this year, we have two teachers at Kent Island High School. Um, that has been a successful model, but when looking at the numbers, there's only 34 students at Kent Island High School. It doesn't see, it's not as many compared to some, some of our other schools. Currently, I, the plan is to move one of those teachers to Southersville Elementary to support the growing need at Southersville. That would put two teachers sharing Southersville and Church Hill. So Church Hill only has approximately 12 students right now, so it's a low caseload, but that would put those other two teachers there daily to support the English language learners at Southersville. The other um, changes within that model are just really, the goal is for ESOL teachers not to have three schools. Currently we have one other teacher that has three schools she's traveling to, not the most effective model when she's spending a lot of time traveling. So really trying to break it down to having two schools. The one teacher at the top you see at Ken Island, Bayside, and Mattapique has much lower numbers, so a much easier three schools, um, but we do have one teacher right now that is servicing all of the Centerville schools, um, Centerville Elementary, Kennard, and the middle school, and that's been really difficult. So trying to split that up a little bit. Do you have any questions based on the numbers there? They have helpers or something in class. I mean, you have a teacher, but then they have assistants and things like that into school when they're there. I'm sorry. They ha they, the teacher, but yes. then you have assistants for them because when I see 60, 70 students, I yes. must have somebody to. Yes, so the ESOL teachers, um, their role is to really teach ling language acquisition. So they're gonna pull them out and make sure they get those services, but they're also pushing in whenever they can Other to students. support the content area teacher, yes. And then there's assistants, there's tutors, there's lots of other personnel within the building that are supporting as well. I just don't want people to think that there's only you know, one teacher for that many. I mean, that's just being pulled out and doing a few little things, not no, just. No, no, no. That would not be possible. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. Great. Thank, Thank you. Very Thank much. you. Thank you. Okay, summer school update, Mr. Kintop. <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening. I echo the sentiments about Miss Casey. Mm. Uh, when I first came uh, to Southersville in 2005, Dr. Sadusky hired me and he introduced me to certain folks up in Southersville and said, here's the people that you, you need to know. And Miss um, Casey was one of them. So um, I am here to talk to you about this year's summer uh, programming plan. Um, it's looking a little bit different than we, did we had last year, but there are still a lot of similarities. Um, First, my purpose is to talk to you tonight about what programs we're offering, the times, dates, and locations of those programs, um, and what we're projecting as far as students who are going to be involved. Um, and I apologize. I was talking about Ms. Casey, but Vice President Bennett, Dr. Sam, and <laughs> board members, I didn't mean to be unofficial you did, with you, you guys. Did the I apologize. important one for tonight. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we'll start with our Title I programs. We're having our Title I enrichment programs this year. Uh, they will be held at Southersville Middle School and at Graysonville Elementary School. Southersville Middle School will actually have students from Southersville Elementary, Churchill Elementary, and Southersville Middle. Um, we're doing one location for all three of those schools. Um, and then Graysonville Elementary will have the students from Graysonville Elementary School there. 
The program runs for four weeks from July 10th to August 3rd. That's Mondays through Thursdays from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Right now, we're projected about 140 students that will be served through these programs with an hour and a half of their time being spent in reading and another hour and a half being uh, spent in math, trying to reinforce skills that those students may need. Um, we do have pre and post evaluations set up so we can monitor how well the students perform from the beginning to the end. All the curriculum and materials are once again provided for teachers. Um, we're trying to keep our numbers once in the 12 to 15 range because when you're trying to help kids in the summer program, it's better to have smaller numbers so you can give them the individual help. At those same locations in the afternoon, we're going to be running a PFY extended day program, both at Southersville and at Graysonville Elementary School, but this is for the K to 5 students. Um, this is coming from 21st century. Um, same dates. Monday through Thursday, but this goes from 12 p.m. to 3.30. So this is an opportunity for students who are part of that Title I program in the morning to stay and get some, um, what you'll see in a minute are the camp programs from the GEARS grant. We're gonna be extending them to the afternoon in the PFY. So right now we have registered 95 students of that 140 that are gonna stay for the full day. Um, we will be providing them with a lunch in between the two programs. And as I said, we'll be working on the, we'll have rotations of STEAM, art and nature and team sports camps, just like we do with the GEARS grants. Um, once all provided, uh, set up for them and the students will just rotate over that four week period in those different programs. In the same buildings, we are running the summer camps. Miss um, Amy Smith presented this to you last year. This is off of the two year grant, the GEARS grant. Um, same dates, same times. Um, we right now have 160 students signed up for those programs. That grant, uh, the GEARS grant is running out this year, so this will be the, the last year that we run, at least for the GEARS grant, this program. They started by inviting all the students who were in the gifted and talented or have been identified as potential gifted and talented students. And then once those slots, um, once that time frame had ended, then it was opened up to anybody that wanted to, to join those programs. The one thing I will tell you is that those that are in the summer camps do not stay for the PFY program because we run the similar content and activities after school. So that they, they're there for the morning and then they leave um, in the middle of the day. At Southersville Elementary School, we're gonna be running our migrant program again. This is for infants to 12th grade. This is a little bit longer than our summer program. It's a different grant. It runs from July 11th to August 10th. It is Monday through Friday, and it is a full day, 8 to 3.30. Right now, we have projected 65 students that are going to be in that program at Southern Elementary. We take care of everything. We have the transportation, food. It is uh, funded by Title I Part C and the Immigrant Grant. They do focus on the same things as our enrichment program, the math, the reading, um, STEAM because we know that's a good integration and of course English language acquisition for the for the students that are there or the or the individuals that are there because they're some of them are younger than school age. They have three family engagement workshops that are set up for this summer um, and they do take a weekly field trip to Camp Pocomath for swimming and that's on Fridays. Through special education, we are running our extended school year services for students who may be needing that extra push in the summer so they don't have a slide back in their learning. We'll be holding that at Southersville Middle and Graysonville Elementary School students if they're part of our enrichment program or the summer camp. That way we can provide them those services while they're there. Otherwise, we'll be holding um, ESY at Queen Anne's County High School. So we're gonna have eight classrooms available. Students will be coming. Um, between July 10th and August 3rd in the morning, just like the, like the other programs. Um, it says there that we have a projected 120 students. The one thing I need you to know though is it's not 120 students every day. They may be coming like Mondays and Wednesdays for, and then another group is coming Tuesdays and Thursdays. It allows them to give that individual attention to those students. Um, very, very small groups, small classes, as I said. Um, it's funded through special ed and some local money. Um, and of course, as I said, the, I, the object here is to make sure that we maintain the skills for those students. Um, on their IEP and what's going to be necessary for them as they move to the next, to the next level. And anyone who is, is eligible for ESY, it was done through their IEP team. It's just not something you get. The IEP team makes a determination, meet, meet with parents and so forth to, to have students participate in that. We have our high school credit recovery program. That is going to be at Queen Anne's County High School this year again, um, grades 9 through 12. Same four weeks, July 10th through August 3rd, Monday through Thursday. But we run the high school program from 8 a.m. until essentially 12 p.m. The students are gonna have opportunity to sign up themselves for the courses that they need. We try to get as many of the 
uh, core content, math, science, social studies, um, and English, and also some uh, electives, foreign languages, PE, health, things that we know the students need to graduate, um, they can sign up for those. We are continuing to use the blended learning model there, which means the teachers this year will be teaching a lesson every day, um, a mini lesson, and then providing more one-to-one -one and small group help for the students as they go through their program with Edmentum. Um, in the past, we've kind of selectively had the lessons once a week or twice a week. This year, we're, it's gonna be required every day. So there's an active piece for the students every day. Um, we're increasing our requirements for attendance because we, we wanted to have the kids um, be present with teachers to get the learning a little bit more but we're still flexible because it is summer and students have jobs and there are other obligations so um, we, we've set our uh, change out it went out on the website I think it was actually published today um, I know the high schools have the, the sheet we've already had people signing up for the program so um, we were actually we moved one of our transportation uh, line items this year um, we're not running a bus in the middle of the morning we're going to do a morning and, and an end ride and we were able to slide some money over into staffing so we're going to actually have more teachers there this year which means each teacher can focus on a given content instead of having biology and chemistry in the room at the same time we're trying to focus on biology in this room and chemistry in this room so that's that's going to be helpful for the students when they recover their stuff this summer I ask one question sure 10 a.m to 11 50 a.m not p.m right <laughs> oh, AM, yes, yes. I just don't want those kids there too long. <laughs> Absolutely. They're all day, man. Gotcha. As many times as I went over this, and you still caught one of them. Uh, yes, uh, that is until. And we, for the high school students, we also offer them a breakfast and a lunch while they're there if they need it. So. Um, as I've said last year, and I will continue to, to shout this, um, this does not happen without a lot of people being involved. The planning of this with curriculum supervisors, the principals of the buildings where we're holding it, food services, the executive team, um, transportation. I mean, we, we were on this a lot earlier uh, this year, and then we still ran into things that, that made us push and have to go, and, and people have been really flexible and really helpful. Um, the execution this summer, we have uh, all of our folks in line on staffing. We have cleaning schedules. So we're working with Mr. Pender this morning to make sure that we can try and get things done so we can get materials in and get teachers in and prepped and ready to go. So I'm grateful for all that. Once again, our summer opportunities are, are for all students, from anyone who might need to be sliding back and not able to move forward with education to those that are gifted and talented. So we're trying to provide as many opportunities um, to meet those kids where they are as we can. Um, the only difference really this year is we don't have as many sites and that was stri that's strictly a funding issue we just didn't have the ability to do as many sites um, but we still do have uh, we've utilized our spaces our transportation all those things the best we can to really get the maximum out of our summer programs this year so hey, do you have question. any other questions yeah, yes ma'am please about the high school credit recovery mm -hmm. i know we had a huge number that the kids used to become really successful last year after we had shut down do you anticipate it being as large this year? I, I do. Um, I've been doing this for six years now, and, and our numbers have steadily been in the 150 to 180 student range. Um, so yes, I do. I do expect that we're going to have a, a large number of students that are going to participate. I mean, this is this really does help them keep on track for graduation. Um, people don't think about it, but when you're in your freshman year and you're behind by three credits, making up two of them in the summer makes a big deal down the road when you're trying to get ready for graduation. Wasn't there something odd about health? There was some kind of new. There was a yes, new we're state. going to be offering the comprehensive health recovery this summer. Because we went from a half credit to a whole. Right, right. And our staff is pretty much our teachers, Queen Anne's County. All of our teachers. All, all, all staffing for every position that we've hired for the summer is a uh, Queen Anne's County employee currently. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Oh. Okay, I believe it's uh, Dr. Noel next for policy 408. Good evening, Ms. Vice President, Dr. Salins, members of the board and executive team. For the record, Michael Knoll, Director of Human Resources. I come before you tonight with the second reading of Policy 408, Drug-Free Workplace. The purpose of this reformatting and update is to bring more in line of our policy that was not updated since 2013 to the current standards and also in preparation for the July 1st legalization of recreational marijuana. To date, we have had no public or staff comments on the website. So as an information item, I bring for you, before you the second reading. This was, again, we just changed it. Marijuana was like the only thing that we added yes. into our, right? Okay. 
Treating it more like alcohol. Yes, Tre yes treating it more like alcohol. Still a forbidden substance right. in the workplace. Correct. Right. Questions, all right. That was okay. easy. Yep. Thank right. you. I will see you next you. month for action item. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Dr. Kibler. Good evening, Vice President Bennett, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team, uh, Dr. Matthew Kibler, Director of Accountability to Implementation. Um, just to kind of continue the trend that we've set forth um, this year with regulations being under the purview of the superintendent, we're just bringing to you tonight some changes that we are making to uh, policy, and policy and regulation development, regulation 110.1. Um, the changes here reflect the changes that were made in the policy on policies um, policy last um, last year. That is a lot to follow, a lot of policies and regulations. But basically, what we needed to do was bring the regulation in line with the, uh, the changes that were made in the policy on policies. And that's what the proposed changes here do. I had uh, some questions. So when you're in B and it says the superintendent's designee, who's going to be the superintendent? It will be somebody different each time or? Yours. I, I, am, I am that designee. And then the responsible office? The responsible office would depend on the policy. Policy, okay. And then there's another uh, on the second page and it talks about the that you would then, uh, superintendent's designee would uh, be responsible for disseminating electronic copy um, is that because it says to the executive team and the department school heads will that also go to the BOE members so it I kind of took this to mean the way we post it on the website mm -hmm. that is the electronic copy okay. so where it is on the home page nothing nothing separate I mean we talk about it for the three reads here um, we even this this year I posted the the four-year policy review calendar on the website. So not only do people have a chance for the three reads for the specific policy, but they can see at any time when the, po the certain policies we have scheduled to be brought up. Obviously, you all as board members, the policy on policy says as well, community members can request a review of a policy at any time. Um, so this is just kind of streamlining mm -hmm. that the superintendent would designate somebody to kind of organize the process of, of policy review basically okay. so and we have a standard schedule of four years but again mandates from the state the federal government something going on in our schools that the superintendent wants to bring up board of ed members would like to bring up um, the materials of instruction policy is a, is a good one that, mm -hmm. that came mm -hmm. up so dr sprinkles leading a committee that wasn't on for this year necessarily but now being brought up so and this is not related to the regulations i'm sorry but it seems a time that maybe talk about it the stakeholders comments who have we come up with a different way to put it out to the stakeholders are we still just posting it on the because i know it in the past and so it doesn't mean we're doing it now we used to send it out i'm not sure how we got it sent out but it was also posted on our website are we how are we reaching out to the stakeholders so right now in the policy section of the website is where the um is where they're posted every month and they would stay there for their two right, or th right. two to three reads and then I believe with the s'more report that Miss Dennis sends out as well, because it has everything that that we do at a board meeting. So the commute, the the parents, school staff, they would see it that way as well. Okay, so they're just seeing it on our website. We're not sending anything out any longer. Other than okay. the link to the agenda items in, in okay. the board meeting. Okay. And then comments go directly to Miss Dennis by email. I, I believe she could correct me. If okay. I'm wrong. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Kibler. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Towers, expenditure status reports. Good evening, Ms. Bennett, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team. My name is Jane Towers. Tonight we bring before you the monthly expenditure reports for your review. Winding things down here. <laughs> <laughs> questions or just a, a comment i know we still have a lot of outstanding things that we'll be finishing up by the end of the year which is june the 30th 
we will be able to replenish our fund balance a little bit because I know it's getting to the low end of our po our policy, what we're supposed to keep. Right. We're, we're looking at before the end of the year around 2.5%. So our policy is one to five. There may be some projects that might be identified to um, help with um, the one-time capital type of expenditures. We might use fund balance for that. And we'll but we're not, we're trying to keep it in the middle, to, not the bottom end of it though. I, I think that the goal is at least two or above percent. But you said right now we're at 1.5? 2.5. 2.5, okay. Mm -hmm. yes. Everything's in the 90s except one, and that's Come only a little on, bit yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah, looks good. <laughs> uh, the next report we bring before you is the ESSER 2 and ESSER 3. ESSER 2 and 930-23, that has been fully spent out. Remember, ESSER 2 was for social distancing. ESSER 3 is really for, to identify learning loss and as Mr. Kimtok said, the credit recovery at the high school will be supported under ESSER 3 funds, and we're on track to spend that out. There's a, a grant opportunity that was just emailed to Dr. Salins, and um, we may be able to have a little bit more breathing room in here for um, some uh, maybe kindergarten um, laptops, so that more to come on that, but um, really being strategic and the different funding buckets. So um, more to come on that, but I think ESSER 3 might be able to sustain that. Nice. Questions? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Thank Towers. You. Towers. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Pender. Yes. Good evening, Vice President Bennett, Dr. Salins, board members for the record. Uh, my name is Sid Pender. Chief Operating Officer. Um, I am he here before you tonight uh, to seek approval for a overnight trip uh, for the Kent Island High School cheerleading team. Um, the purpose of this trip is for the uh, varsity dance team at Kent Island High School to travel to Spooky Nook Sports Complex in Mannheim, Pennsylvania to attend the Universal Dance Association camp. Um, the dates will be July 31st, uh, 2023 through August 3rd, 2023. Uh, the team will depart Kent Island High School via bus um, on the 31st and return on the 3rd. Uh, there are approximately 11 students uh, attending with the head coach. Um, if approved, the budget will not exceed $5,000 and funding will come from um, the Kent Island High School dance uh, team account with various other fundraisers. The, um, the housing and all is, if you've ever been to Spook Spooky Nook, um, is right there inside the complex. So it's not like the, once they get there, they'll be going other places. They'll be housed right in one location. Any questions? No, except that's an interesting name. I think it's a huge place. Uh, there's one chaperone. Yes. Well, the, I mean, what happens one, if one, there's one female chaperone and all um, of the participants are female? Right. And, but it's up to 11, I would imagine. That There'll it's be probably, a parent or somebody there or something. Uh, there's, yes, but it's probably going to be about eight when they get done to attend. They were requesting for 11, but I believe um, when they had tryouts and cuts and things like that, it would be down to 11. To eight. It's a, the housing part of it's very close to each other. Oh, I've, I've been there and it's, oh. you know, <laughs> my granddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> questions okay um i recommend that the queen Anne's county board of ed approve the overnight trip for the canal high school varsity dance team to travel in Anaheim, pennsylvania to participate in the universal dance association at spooky nook sports complex fiscal impact five thousand dollars budget source kent island high school dance team account second, second. Okay. all in favor aye any opposed okay thank you all right, Mrs. Ag, is it? Is that the how you? I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. It's Ag. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Just Hi. not very loud. I'm sorry. Hi. So I'm uh, Kimberly Ag, and I'm here to make a request um, for an overnight trip for my Envirothon team. 
um, and it is coming down to the wire, so I apologize for that. We weren't expecting to win. <laughs> We're, they're quite a young team, um, but they did fabulously. And so next Thursday and Friday is the state Envirothon competition. <laughs> Uh, we'll be going to uh, Garrett County 4-H camp. We have housing there. Um, it's five girls and myself. Um, it is funded uh, through the Soil Conservation Office. And, um, and that's everything. We have a, an agenda on Thursday to do some learning. And then the competition is on Friday. Uh, we've actually won three times um, in the last, I would say, five years, and we haven't been back because of COVID. Um, so it will be really awesome. We haven't won states. We've won the shore and gone to states, so. Okay, do you mind if I ask, what exactly what did you, as Eastern Shore Envirothon that you won, what did you have to do to? So the, um, okay. the competition is, uh, hands-on competition and the students are really acting sort of as um, field scientists so they have four categories uh, wildlife aquatics uh, forestry and soil science um, and they have to go and they essentially take a test it's sort of a hands-on test they're identifying um, feathers for wildlife or aging out a deer jawbone um, they're identifying um, macroinvertebrates for aquatics, just for exa some examples. They do some measuring of, of trees, diameter and height using forestry tools. So a number of things like that. It's very hands-on. It's really fun. It's <laughs> so fun. Um, so proud of these girls. They're very into it and young. So they're a young team, so we could do it again. Very cool. cool. Well, congrats on winning three times. Let's Thank hope you, you do well at state. Possibly. Let's see. <laughs> well. All right. Uh, I recommend that the Queen Anne's County Board of Ed approve the overnight field trip for the Queen Anne's County High School Environmental Club to travel to Garrett County for each camp to participate in the state environmental competition. Fiscal impact, none. Budget source, not applicable. Second. All in favor? Hi. Hi. All right. And I say congratulations. Thank and, you. Know. And when you win, I'd love to have the girls come back and share what they had to do to, okay. to win. Okay. That would, that would be, be awesome. And if they win states, I'll be back because then they have to go really far. Okay. Well, Garrett, I was going to say Garrett's going looking, looking, far. looking forward to seeing you. <laughs> yeah, but this states, I think, is like in oh. Illinois or oh, something goodness. like that. Oh, goodness. Illinois is I mean, wonderful. Not states, but yeah. the national. Yeah, the national. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Well, Best of luck. Yes. Okay. Can I get a motion to approve the HR report as presented? So moved. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And if you'll give me an opportunity, because in that report, oh, we I'm do. so sorry. Okay. Yes, no, yes. you have to approve it first. So I say thank you already because you already approved it. Um, but I would like to introduce some familiar faces and some new faces. Um, First of all, a new appointment is the Supervisor of Instruction, Angela Giebert, who is currently with us and moving up as Miss um, Cox moves on. So if you'll please come forward and just like to say congratulations mm -hmm. to her. Mm -hmm. Very nice. <laughs> Maybe you can stay so we can get a picture at the end. Okay. So, okay. Um, I'd also like to um, introduce to you the supervisor instruction that's not necessarily on this report, but was on a previous report who is with us tonight, mm -hmm. and he is new to us, and that is Darren um, Guido. If you'll please come forward. <laughs> Congratulations, we're gonna come up there in just a minute. I have to have my cheaters over here. And then we also have, uh, I don't know where Sid went, but we also have a new uh, face with us that you've already approved, but is in our audience mm -hmm. today. And this is Daryl, he's our new facilities person. Um, so you'll be seeing him a lot around. And, and Daryl, can you please pronounce your last name for me again? Barraclough. Barraclough. Thank you. I knew I was going to butcher it, and I didn't want to do that to you. So thank you and welcome. And he's already hit the floor running and is, is, is doing great things. And then our last announcement this evening is the appointment of our new principal of Centerville Middle School, Mrs. Tracy Kenna. So congratulations to all of you. So if we can please have you all come up, and we'll take a nice picture. And congratulations. <laughs> 
her and Mrs. Smith got up and ran. Good, good. Well, I had to practice that one. You were supposed to do too hard for me. I'm just kidding. That's fine. And congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, um, Vice President. I appreciate that time. <laughs> well, I'm you. Perfect. Have a good night. Thank you. All right, Mrs. Smith. Cheers. Good evening, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team. For the record, I'm Amy Smith, supervisor of K-12 Mathematics and Gifted and Talented. I bring to you the contract for Agile Minds for $94,508. This is our primary instructional um, tool and curriculum for grades six, seven, geometry, and algebra two. Uh, we are requesting that we use our unrestricted budget funds for this year, for this coming school year. Any questions? In um, number one, purchase of services price, we go down to D. It says we can renew it next year for after. Is there an agreement on what we renew it for, or is there a cost? So we are currently on a year-to-year -year contract now with Agile Minds. We that was originally in the adoption process, probably about eight to ten years ago. We had gone through a multi-year contract. At this point, all of those courses need to go through a course review and adoption to bring in whether it's agile mind continues on a multi-year contract or we bring in a new source so from here forward we're year to year until we actually get on to a adoption review process for those four courses and i will say this year there they gave me a percent discount because we have been longtime members but next year the percentage will be increasing a bit steeper going forward for the next year update on those four courses would that the, be the, the discount increasing or the increasing of the price no the increasing of the price yeah. <laughs> thank you they they allowed me to fulfill using our prior contracting prices for this year because we are a long-standing member versus going the eight and a half percent increase for this year and once we do a multi-year contract is that right so when you go into a multi-year contract it will the front end looks like it's a steeper price initially but in the long run it actually saves you many many dollars um okay. but you have to go through the adoption price it, uh adoption process at this point because it's been 10 years since all four of those courses actually reviewed the material to bring in a new so i may not have understood when do we under have a timeline of when they'll be reviewed or we just it, i put it i requested in the budget for me to go through adoption process but a lot of that depends upon how overall funding goes and so right now, I'm not sure that next year I will be able to get okay. those four courses or even my aim initially was to get middle school, the six and seven, and then because moving all four of them would potentially mean two to three different companies because the high school is a very different program than what middle school would be. It wouldn't necessarily be same publishers. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any, Any other questions? questions? Recommend the board approve the contract renewal with Agile Minds, fiscal impact $94,508, budget source, local unrestricted budget for fiscal year 24. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. This is, oh, she, all right, she's on. Back again. Back again. <laughs> all right. 
So good evening. Tonight we bring before you a lease purchase agreement to approve 800 HP laptops for teachers and staff. Um, Queen Anne's County Public Schools is working on replacing laptops for the full-time staff to include teachers and employees. This is purchase aligns with Queen Anne's County Technology um, Replacement Plan. Per our policy, procurement policy 310, the district is permitted to utilize an, inter an intergovernmental cooperative purchasing agreement. This agreement here would be through the TIPS program using contract 20005. And the administration has concluded that the TIPS contract is fair and reasonable when compared to other existing contracts similar in nature. So the total projected replacement of the 800 teacher staff laptops and associated equipment is 517,692 consisting of up to our four annual payments of 129,423. Um, I'd like to just say that approval of this would take it into final negotiations. We're still trying to negotiate from the contract for the um, interest rate, but the interest rate when you look at lease purchasing agreements is on a three year treasury. Three-year treasury is running at four and a quarter right now. What happens to the old laptops? Do they get reused, recycled? Do they give you a discount if they take them back? Or uh, Mr. Combs could probably answer that better. Than <laughs> right, 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 Josh Combs. <laughs> yes, uh, we attempt to try to uh, sell them if we can. Uh, if not, if we can't sell them, then they end up being recycled um every electronic device has to be recycled properly according to epa so but we just first attempt it because if we can sell something it can help pay off um any remaining the last lease payment of that particular contract and when you say sell them are they offered to teachers and staff or is it put out on an auction thing like we do with it's more like an auction thing i mean i certainly don't mind selling to other people but yeah normally we, we contact several companies and ask them what your best price is mm -hmm. for the particular model model and then we just like kind of like a bit of like doing our oh, so you, you sell a whole enchilada then yeah okay not just one at a time yeah no i try to sell all of them gotcha. <laughs> no i mean it'd be nice if a teacher had one and get you know buy it and give it to their children but then that's going to get into a whole bag of worms yeah it gets into a little bit more yeah um time consuming if you know got, it's not worth it yeah. it's a not clarifying question um i know that we were back and forth trying to get leased um information mm -hmm. and we have 8.05 and 8.09 mm -hmm. Did they, how are they different? Are they the same? I have 8.05 and 8.06. Yeah, we have an 8.09 that's also so, staff laptops. Right. One is a lease, one is a purchase approval. That one is a purchase approval is the actual equipment itself. So um, you when, when you think about right. the equipment is one to go through a vendor and then how we're going to um, finance it is another. So it's two separate. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yes, great question. I yeah, exactly. And I was that. like, and yes. I can't answer that right now. So my brain is full. So, so when, we see, night. when we see subject to final negotiation, that's the financing part of it. Correct. Much. Correct. The, the financing. It's where part. the where the interest rate's going to be at the time. Right. So right now we're looking at five and a quarter, five and a half. Um, still think there's probably a little more wiggle room in that, um, but um, once that's in place, then the master agreement will be signed by the superintendent. I will tell you, I went through these contracts, this one and the one for the students. Thank you very much for the uh, sparing parts, replacements, <laughs> and all the things that go <laughs> along with it, and not just an outright purchase of stuff that we can't maintain. So thank you very much for that. And if, if I can add to one, one more thing, this actually gets into the budget in FY24, because in years past, it's, it's always been um, either in the, in the capital budget or pushed off maybe a year or two. So this gives a stable um, funding source. It's in the budget. And then like similar to the copiers, four years, you go through the process again. You so go. you don't have to worry about trying to scrape for, for funds here and there. This um, gives stability for the district. Yeah, because we used to not, we used to just put into the commissioners for a capital improvement, or That's capital correct. expansion. And really, in all fairness, it's not a 20 year piece of equipment. No. No. Not anymore. Not anymore. And that's what they're right, buying and stuff for capital. Right. Any other questions? I recommend that the board approve securing the replacement of teacher staff laptops through tips 
ICPA through a four-year lease purchase agreement with Trafera. Fiscal impact $517,692 with yearly payments of $129,423 subject to final negotiations of the lease agreement. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All right, the, the next one we bring before you is 2,600 Chromebooks for the high school students. Queen Anne's County Public Schools is working on replacing 2,600 Chromebooks for the 9th through 12th graders. This purchase is aligned with the Queen Anne's County Technology Internal Replacement Plan. Per our policy 310, Procurement of Goods and Service, the district is permitted to utilize an existing cooperative purchasing agreement to secure those goods. The planned Chromebooks would be utilized under an intergovernmental purchasing cooperating agreement, ICPA, through MEEC, the Meek. Maryland, thank you, Maryland Education Edu or Enterprise Consortium, using their contract number UMD 972016. And the administration has concluded that the MEEC contract is fair and reasonable when compared to other existing contracts in nature. The projected cost for the replacement of the two. 2,600 Chromebooks and associated equipment is 1,402,788 consisting of four annual payments of 350,697. Any comments? Same waiting. thing with those, you try to salvage what you can out of the- Yeah, it's a little bit, you don't get as much books. on the Chromebooks because they're already cheaper to begin with. And right. after so many years, they don't update anymore. It's kind of like an iPad. After five years, no one really wants to buy your iPads, <laughs> but I try. I try to get something so we can get the lease payment. You know, you want to get 10 bucks, want something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just throw things away. <laughs> recommend the board approve securing the replacement of Chromebooks through the MMEC ICPA through a four-year lease purchase agreement with Hewlett Packard. Fiscal impact $1,402,788 with a yearly payments of $350,697 subject to final negotiations of a lease agreement. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. All right. A few more. <laughs> You're expensive this evening. <laughs> yes. Just for the record, uh, my name is Josh Combs. I'm Supervisor IT. Good evening, Vice President Spanett, board members, executive team. Uh, I believe our next item will be the 807. It's the interactive flat panels for Canard. Um, we are looking into doing a replacement plan for, we have one for the servers, we have one for desktops or for laptops. We want to do something for our projectors. So at Canard, we've had those projectors for, I believe, nine years now we've had them in all those rooms they have really we got the use out of them. normally in the classroom you get five years so we've got nine years use out of them um so this is looking to replace 31 classrooms at canard uh using the master uh harbor contract from do it uh under meek it is totaled at ninety thousand nine hundred eighty five dollars I have a quick question. Yes, it says please. the maintenance is becoming increasingly difficult. Is it yes. expensive or it's just getting hard because we're getting so old? <laughs> well, they're bulb, what's nice with these technology, there's no there's no bulbs in the new gotcha. technology. So you got to find bulbs. The older they are, the more expensive the bulbs, one hard to find, and the more expensive they go. You can go from a, starting down to $80 at the beginning, eight years later, 250 because they don't make them anymore. Mm -hmm. And now when they break, can't really fix them, now you got to buy a whole new one. Okay. Can I say I was impressed with the zero freight? I know I'm big, big up on the freight. That I saw like... that, Helen. I'm not going to say anything, but I'm glad you saw that. Yes. Yes. Talk about that. the life expectancy. Yes, the life expectancy the for ones. a IFP is 10 years. And we've so had these for nine. We've had these for nine. So I'm trying to do a 10 year, eight to 10 year replacement plan on our um, interactive technology for projectors and flat panels for the classrooms. Okay. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. 
recommend that the board approve the purchase of the 31 clear touch interactive flat panels through the reseller daily computers yes. fiscal impact ninety thousand nine hundred eighty five dollars budget source fy 23 fund balance second all in favor aye, aye. aye. thank you the oh he's staying more oh, oh yeah more. yeah I, I have like five more i'm sorry <laughs> I apologize. i'll try to get through these quickly well thank you for that one <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, 810, this is, it's basically the same thing, except for center of middle, and we're looking at um, Epson Brightlink interactive projectors. Uh, these are also bulbless. Uh, um, they're, they use laser technology versus um, DLP technology. Uh, this is being purchased through the P PEMP 22 uh, co-op agreement. <coughs> It is for a total of 55,645 out of the FY23 fund balance. And this is for the, all the classrooms. Any questions? Any, yep, any questions? Okay. All right, recommend that the board approve the purchase of 31 Epson Brightlink projectors through the reseller CDWG. Fiscal impact $55,645. Budget source fiscal year 23 fund balance. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you again. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, next one, 811. This is our annual renewal of our Microsoft licensing. Um, this is for all of our products, servers and clients, office servers uh, being purchased through the Meek co-op agreement. This is for a total of $78,163.08. Um, and this is out of the FY24 technology software licensing budget. This is one of the ones we do every year. Any questions? All right. Recommend that the board approve the MEEC Microsoft EES agreement 2022 Microsoft licensing with Bell Technologics. Funny. Fiscal impact $78,163.08. Budget source fiscal year 2024. Technology software licensing budget. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Are we going back to eight and nine? Yeah, well, well yeah. Okay. That's Josh. fine. Yes. It, uh, it, the uh, 14E Chromebook 808 and 809. Um, okay, so that, she was talking about the lease agreements. So uh, basically, we have our, but she mentioned the 800 HP laptops for the teachers and staff. Um, is there, was there questions? Well, we had a purchase so, agreement and we had a lease agreement. So, was, so you need to talk about the, yeah. you went through the lease agreement, but we've never been to the actual purchasing. Purchase of, of the mm -hmm. products, products themselves. Products. Yeah. Here, so. Yes, so yes, we want to purchase this through uh, again, the tips agreement um, through the reseller, Trafera, uh, as you mentioned, for 800 HP, 840 uh, laptops. Hi, Josh. Hey, thank you. <laughs> Save me. <laughs> <laughs> so, which Everybody one needs a right hand man. Uh, 809. 809. Let me just look at this up. So uh, this is just to, to notify you that um, it's going through daily for that amount. The financing is going to be through a lease. I did notice that this 809 is different pricing than what we had for the 806. Yes, because that included interest. Okay. For the lease. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So this is just actual purchase. So. Uh, so just the board approve the purchase of 800 HP laptops through the reseller. Trafera, fiscal impact $479,200, budget source not applicable because it's a lease. Right. Utilizing the lease, correct. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And then 808, I guess. And then we need to do yeah. 808. Yes, uh, 808. Um, first approval for the staff laptops. Uh, that's 808. This would be for the high school The students. high school Chromebooks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 2600 Lenovo Chromebooks for high school students, 9 through 12. This will be through the reseller daily. Um, 
utilizing the lease agreement. Uh, utilizing the lease agreement. Okay. Recommend the board approve the purchase of the 2600 Lenovo Chromebooks through the reseller daily computers using the lease purchase agent fiscal impact $1,287,650 budget source lease. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Puts us back then to 812. Are we at 12? 812. Mm -hmm. Okay. Back on track. Yes. Sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> I have so uh, many. 812 is for virtual <laughs> approval for light speed internet content filtering. This is for a subscription for one year. We are currently using this product. Um, this is our Subscription content filtering allows us to restrict access to web content that may be deemed offensive, appropriate, or even dangerous to uh, our computers, students, staff computers, uh, and for students even if they're off campus. Uh, this person being made through a co-op person agreement uh, through the Maryland Education Enterprise Consortium, contract number UMD 972016. This being purchased through the reseller data networks for a total of $51,040 budget source FY24 technology software licensing budget. So I did have one question. Yep. So we've used this for quite a while. We haven't yes. had any incidents of students being able to get outside of the network or being targeted from outside. They've been, this is sort of. This is more like, um, I don't want you, you're going to have a filter version of YouTube, or you can't go to Facebook. Gotcha. That's the, that's what more that, that this is for. This is to keep you in the education website realm versus the whole internet. And so this is for the 15 schools for the students and staff. Okay. It's basically, we, we we content filter everything coming out of here. Uh, we have to by law. If you have mm -hmm. E-rate money, uh, you have to content filter. We'll see that you know they're starting to do that with public libraries, um, but with our students, we uh, also this with this particular new service we can used to be where it only worked inside the network now if they're at home and they're on their internet they're still being filtered in their own our devices Good. that was my so. question because mm -hmm. it's just not in when they're on our internet system but even if they're taking it doesn't home, matter where they are they're on our device <laughs> if they're, on they're on our, our device, device they're using they our filter and so basically the same max as they get in the school they get home um, and that's from staff to students uh yes okay. thank you that's any other questions Recommend the board approve the Lightspeed Internet Content Filter subscription through the Reseller Data Networks for July 1, 2023 to June 30 of 2024. Fiscal impact $51,040. Budget source FY24 Technology Software Licensing Budget. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, 813. Uh, Purchase approval for power school enrollment registration. Um, this is to renew the ongoing contract. Josh, we've heard enough. <laughs> 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 this is all of our power school stuff. Hello, welcome to the power school portion of tonight's program. <laughs> My name is Tracy Kenna. I am the current supervisor of accountability. I thought it would be only appropriate that as my last presentation of the Board of Ed, I should try to get a lot of money from you guys to keep the place running next year. <laughs> Josh, would you like to speak about the CIS? Uh, so, yes. Um, well, the first one would be the enrollment registration, which is basically our online forms. It's our back to school forms. It's how we keep track of our demographics and all the questions we ask at the beginning of the year uh, for both new and current students. We've actually moved a lot more of the pre K registration into enrollment this year, so we're trying to make this whole process entirely electronic. Yes, our parents still do have an opportunity to do things on paper, but the more we can get done electronically, the more documents we can get uploaded, the faster we can get kids enrolled and registered and scheduled. And these include Central Middle School too, right? Uh, they were first. Do <laughs> <laughs> uh, these uh, power schools a sole source purchase? Um, the fiscal amount for the enrollment forms is twenty-seven thousand eight hundred ninety-one twenty-nine cents out of the FY twenty-four. Technology software licensing budget. I have a quick question. Do you say sole source, so there's nobody else that does this? No one else that sells Power School. Power School is direct. I got to buy everything directly <clears throat> through them. All Power School products. 
Other questions? <laughs> you're, I'm, you're, I was like, are you <laughs> picking another question? Are you good? Okay. <laughs> so just the board approved power school enrollment registry contract for one year, August 1st, 2023 to July 31st, 2024. Fiscal impact $27,891.29. Budget source FY24 technology software licensing budget. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, on to 814. Uh, this is PowerSchool SIS, the, this is the main database student information systems. Um, this also includes causation, maintenance support, and enterprise management services for one year. Um, not only do we get our upgrades and updates th through our SIS, uh, they also provide uh, all the version updates, state updates, database updates, and they take care of monitoring to make sure our servers are healthy and do a offsite data backup for every day for an entire year. So if something ever happened to our servers, we can spin up our data within four hours going back one year. So that's part of this package. Um, this is where we house, the, so that's the Josh speak, the Tracy mm -hmm. speak, is that this is where we house all of our student records, our grades, our transcripts, our uh, credits earned, attendance, parent contact information, immunization. This is where everything lives for the kids. How do we back up two-year, three-year-old information? Do we have a thing you download to something at a different... Oh, like the online registration, if you're doing online registration, it all goes into PowerSchool. Okay. So when the parent fills out the form, they do that, or if someone takes the paper and then puts it onto the online form, all those fields go into the SIS. To the so we have a way to market. recover if we if we crash, we have a way to recover all that back information. Yes, it's a pretty important product. Any other questions? Recommend the board approve the PowerSchool SIS, EMS, CMS, and MNDES contract for one year, August first, twenty twenty three to July 31st, 2024, fiscal impact $57,035.64. Budget source, FY24 technology software licensing budget. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, then I'm gonna tackle 815. Okay. This is PowerSchool's Performance Matters Assessment Analytics Choice. This is our data warehousing platform. It is also a PowerSchool product, so this is where all of our state and national local tests are. This is also where we do our online testing for all of our local assessments. So at this point, the majority of our local assessments that our own teachers have written are now online, so that way they're mimicking the state assessments, which are all online. The SAT, just as an aside, is also moving to online next year, so the the faster we can get the kids used to taking online tests, the better they're actually going to do. They'll only have to grapple with the content of the test. They won't have to grapple with the mechanism of taking an online test. So Performance Matters handles all of this for us. They allow us to create the online tests. And then this also allows all of our teachers and specialists and principals to do their own data analysis, create their own charts and graphs, and work on their school improvement teams with the most up-to-date data. So at this point, it's sixty-four thousand dollars five hundred nineteen thirty-seven cents, coming out of an unrestricted operating budget. So I have a question. We so this is number three of four power school things. Five technically, because Naviance. We don't get a discount for like a group. I, package we've asked. Uh, we've asked i i believe people beyond our pay grade have been asking for things like that so the three okay. musketeers here we just we just try to make the power school stuff work uh, gotcha. yeah. hmm. any other questions comments well i'm just going to say that you know back in the day when we all first started <laughs> there was several different vendors out there and gotcha. basically this one vendor has gobbled up everybody else there's nobody that's left true. but them mm -hmm. that is true. they yeah. have the power so they don't have to give any discounts i we mean actually, it's reality we actually started with performance matters a very long time ago and dr williamson was the assistant superintendent and they were a tiny little company based out of florida since then they've grown into a very large company and then power school bought them a couple years ago mm -hmm. they also bought 
the next one you're about to speak to as well. They also bought they've, the next they've one. They've gobbled up finance. That. They've gobbled up um, Schoology. Yeah. Schoology. I mean, every, they have yeah. everything. Naviance. Naviance. We need Naviance. to talk to some people so we can get them some competition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. It's true. Hey, we would love it. Really we would love it. But, yeah. but again, I will have to say they're a good product. They are. Um, they, they stand by they their are. products and they support mm -hmm. their products. Um, and so the experience is at least positive. Sometimes you see a company grow so fast they've that they outgrow their means and they can't do the support, which happened a little bit. Easy. Right. Yeah. Right. But they caught up again. But they caught up. Yeah. So there is a one-hour maintenance, EMS maintenance. So are they good about that? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They are. They're that is up. actually. Mm -hmm. Even if I put a ticket in, like because we have level two, my especially if it's a technical course, even just asking like a question for auditor, they get back to me the same day mm -hmm. for me. So they got a lot better at that. You okay. can call, but even with a simple question, even though it's a, you put it how serious the question is. And, you know, it was just an informational question. They still got back to me within a day. Mm -hmm. So they're very responsive. Sometimes they're responsive and they can't help you immediately, but they they <laughs> but do right, get right back to you and they, yeah. they do work on our problems and try to fix whatever it is we've broken. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm talking, about, talking about the EMS. If something goes wrong with the server, I know within five minutes. That's the refresh cycle for the server monitoring. So if something goes, wonk, they see it, and they are a 365, 24 seven company. So there's always someone av available. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Cool, yeah. Recommend the board approve the contract with Power School Performance Matters for one year, August 1st, 2023 through July 31st, 2024, fiscal impact $64,519.37, budget source, unrestricted operating budget. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, 816. Okay, 816 is PowerSchool Schoology. This is our LMS, or Learning Management system, uh, Learning man Management Platform. This is our subscription renewal. The cost, this is coming out of the accountability, I'm sorry, this is coming out of the ESSER 3 budget. Cost is $45,877.72. This is, we got into the Schoology game during uh, COVID because we needed to come up with a learning management system to deliver virtual uh, instruction. The state is still requiring that we still maintain an LMS just in case something goes sideways again. Uh, this is a PowerSchool product. This does tie in seamlessly with all of our other PowerSchool products. And again, the support and service is very good. I will also tell you this is just about what we paid last year for Schoology, whereas the previous three products were paying slightly more uh, this year than we did last year, but Schoology is actually holding the same. Do we anticipate them um, requiring us to do this again for maybe another year? And since we have ESSER three, could we do two years in a row? <laughs> two years well, over I, us. I could maybe speak to that. We, there was a new bill. I'd have to look at what the bill actually was passed, but we're gonna have to have a plan that we update every two years to be able to respond in case another pandemic type thing, whatever pop up where we could provide services to students electronically if we had to pivot at a moment's notice. I don't think we're going to be able to get rid of an LMS um, with ESSER expiring. I, I think we're, we're going to have to continue with it because it's going to have to be a part of like that plan if something would happen all of a sudden. We would never be able to get, to get rid of it and then have to all of a sudden enter into a contract and set it up right away. So we need to put it so in the budget right, now. Can we, well, I was wondering, can we do the two year and use our ESSER three? Is there any ESSER that? <laughs> Well, it'll be every every two years that plan okay. that indefinite that plan has to continue now. That's okay. the, the legislature's response to what happened the last time. Thank so you. We don't have the downtime. And at this point, our, all of our teachers have the materials in Schoology that rolls over year to year. Um, so at this point, it, it's kind of easy for them to keep it going year to year. Okay. Any other questions? I recommend the board approve the contract with Power School Schoology for one year. July 1st, 2023 to June 31st, 2024. Fiscal impact $45,877.72. Budget source ESSER 3. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so as I said, the past couple were a little bit more expensive, but we're going to end our power school portion of the evening by saving $10,000. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Evans, take it away. No, it was Mrs. Kenna who made sure that happened. But so it, with power school, Naviance is the primary platform of instruction for career development in grades 6 through 12. It's also a platform in which both high schools submit college application documents to all post-secondary institutions. Um, it also provides us with alumni tracker, which gives us data 
data on graduates and post-secondary enrollment? It was a godsend. When your child is starting college and you gotta apply to 5,000 schools, it was awesome. Again, everything is electronic, yep. and mm -hmm. Common App is tied in. And go. actually, this past week, we've been playing around. I have not told Matt this yet, but we've been playing around with trying to get the kids to be able to do all their four-year plans and Naviance, and then those would automatically go back to PowerSchool to create their schedules for the next year. And, and part of the contract or the license provides training for counselors, and they're actually going to have two three-hour training sessions to high school counselors on Monday and Tuesday of next week. All right. Any other comments? Recommend the board approve the contract for Naviance for the 2023-2024 school year. Fiscal impact $33,563.70. Budget source $33,563.70. Unrestricted budget? Yes. Unrestricted yes. budget? All right. All right. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Guys, thank thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Vice President Bennett, Dr. Salins, board members and executive team. I am Dr. Felicia Tarrison, and I'm here seeking approval to purchase 11 interactive boards for classrooms at Sullersville Elementary School. Sullersville getting a lot of stuff today. Yes, they That's are. are. That's nice. <laughs> Title I. Do mm -hmm. have any questions? Not a one. All right. Thank you. I recommend the board approve the purchase of 11 65 inch 600K series interactive panels with USB HIV screens from daily for use at Sullivansville Elementary School. Fiscal impact $28,050. Budget source Title I Part A grant. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good evening, Vice President Bennett, Dr. Salins, members of the board, executive team. My name is Matt Evans, Supervisor of Student Services. I have before you the third read action item of Student Attendance Policy 503. To date, there's been no public comments or questions. We would ask that the board approve Student Attendance Policy 503. Any questions? Not a one. All right. Recommend that we approve Policy 503, subject to final. Oops. No final edits and format and style. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. One more. Uh, again, a third read action item, destruction of information, policy 510. Uh, to date, no public comments or questions. We would ask the board to approve policy 510. Any comments? Nope. Recommend the board approve policy 510. Subject to final edits and format, format and style. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Just rocking on through. Mm. Good evening again. <laughs> Here tonight for the third read for policy 607, comprehensive curriculum management, seeking your approval. Any comments? No. None. Recommend the board approve policy 607, subject to final edits and f format and style. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to have to fire now. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, um, Vice President Bennett, <laughs> Dr. Salins, board members, executive team for the record. My name is Jolene Smith. I'm the supervisor of special education. I bring before you this evening a third read on policy 638 on student behavior interventions. To date, there was one question since our last um, read. We answered the question. Um, it was just clarif a clarification on one of the items that was in the um, in the policy answered the question they said thank you and there has not been anything further since any questions comments 
meets all Cuomo requirements. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Recommend the board approve policy 638, subject to final edits for format and style. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye. Thank, Thank you. you Oh. <laughs> Good evening, Vice President Bennett, Dr. Salem's board members for record, Sid Pender, uh, Chief Operating Officer, and with me. Daryl Barraclow, uh, School Facility Planner. <laughs> so we figured we would throw them into the fire the very first night. <laughs> so um, we're be um, here before you tonight for approval of a contract uh, between Garland, uh, DBS, and Queens County Public Schools to provide the labor, equipment, and materials necessary to tear off and replace the existing roof system at Kent Island High School. Um, that roof was built in 1998, so it's over 25 years old. We are uh, utilizing the Omnia Partners Cooperative Purchasing Agreement. Um, Garland, DBS, uh, Inc., and Apex Construction provided the lowest bid out of the four companies that submitted bids. Um, the roofing project will comprise of two sections um, with a complete tear off um, installation of a 30 year warranty cold applied two ply modified uh, flood coat. And that's going to go on the, uh, the low slope. And then the standing seam, uh, the raised sections will be uh, standing seam metal roof replacement. Um, if you look at it now, the pitched parts at Ken Island High School have uh, shingles on them. We are going away from shingles and doing the metal to get uh, a longer lifespan out of it. Plus, where it's located next to the uh, bay, you know, there's a lot of wind that comes off of there and different elements. So, um, this is budgeted um, for um, $7,998,746. Uh, and 51% of the funding will come from the state of Maryland, the IAC, and 49% comes from um, the county. Um, any questions? This hey. is the third time, I'm sorry, this is the That's third good. time we put this out to bid. So if you remember, we did receive bids that were Quite around $10 million. So this has come down. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. To where we, mm -hmm. we need to bid. So you said one. So the maximum it was $77,998,746. So it could come under, but it's a firm fix. So it can't go above that, correct? Yes, that's correct. And is there, it said, um, substantially complete by August 15th, then that extra month, would that be for like punch list items? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now there's a potential, this project can go, it's designed in case the material can't be here um, for the, the, the raised pitch section. Um, we're anticipating that it will, but it is um, for a two year cycle. So it could be up to two summers. We're hoping that it's not, but you know, we can't really control the market mm -hmm. and what comes in. Um, but the cost is fixed. Right. The cost is fixed. The and summer. the great thing about it is if we do get the material in, it is covered by Garland. So they're holding the responsibility for that material. It is not our responsibility that they will house it. So, so it won't be, if we by some means didn't get it done this in the summer, they would house it on their facilities. It wouldn't be sitting in our yard or correct. something. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So there will be no escalation in cost. Okay. Any other yeah. questions? Any other questions or comments? I got one other question, but not to regard this thing. We're doing this roof right now. Mm -hmm. This summer. Yes. yes. Don't we have other roof projects going on presently too? Yes, we do. We, uh, I would say in about another week or two weeks, we should be finishing, finishing up Bayside Elementary School roof. If you haven't had a chance, it looks very nice. It does. And the, the lighting that uh, Mr. O'Donnell has done around there, it, it really sets the place off. Um, that was also funded by part of a grant uh, through uh, Delmarva Power to help cut uh, you know, electric usage. But Kent Island Elementary School on Monday will be uh, starting the uh, tear off of that roof. Um, that will be about a month long project um, for the roof that is right there. They've mobilized over spring break and we're ready to go as soon as Monday comes around. So we do have quite a few roofing projects occurring. Right. Well, you know, I commend it. I commend this board and our commissioners for funding this stuff because if we don't have a solid roof, it's going to have problems. Mm -hmm. And I think to keep our buildings up, which I think if you ride around the county, they look pretty nice. And when you see three projects going on right now with a major one of being Ken Island High School, uh, 
I think you know it, it, it speaks a lot, speaks volumes. But we talk about there, our buildings. The building envelopes everything. If you don't have the building envelope, you've lost. And, and speaking of Bayside, you know, we did inside painting last year and outside mm. painting. Now it's new roof, new lighting. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, it's that, and that was fantastic. the one that you know that was the one that was yes yeah, that needed needed um, that some tender living care. Nice. Any questions for Mr. Berglow? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go. E I'm gonna go easy on you. I have no questions. <laughs> All right. I recommend that the board approve the contract with Garland DBS Inc. to replace the roof at Kent Island High School. Fiscal impact seven million nine hundred ninety-eight thousand seven hundred forty-six dollars. Budget source, FY twenty twenty-four CIP IAC QAC government. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I literally ran out of ink. The next item uh, I'm before, uh, here before you tonight is um, action item 8.24. Uh, this is approval for uh, Aaron Mitchie of the Northern County <coughs> Exchange LLC to purchase a new used bus for the 2023-24 school year to replace bus 4614, which will be a used, which will be used as a paid spare bus. Um, with that, he, the contract states the four LLCs get eight paid spare buses. The bus can be in its 10th um, year, which this bus falls within that. And um, a new PVA will be associated with a new school bus. So um, Mr. Mitchie is seeking approval to purchase that. The, um, the replace bus 4614. And that is budgeted in the FY24 budget. Henry, do you mind if I ask a question? It's sure. not pertaining to this bus. Mm -hmm. So our paid spare buses, is that what the, the paid spares, mm -hmm. are they eight. also equipped with cameras? Yes. That's nice. How long does it take them to rotate? When we get a new bus, it's, how long does it take them to pull it off and put them on? What, a, they can do it no, in a No, we get a new bus. Oh, or, a day. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And that's installing the red light runner cameras and the regular cameras on there. Thank you. Yep. I mean, that's another thing. It's pretty amazing. What do we have? Almost 80 buses contracts? Uh, yeah, but close to that. I mean, when you sit there and think, that, and they got to run every day, you just can't call up and say, we're not coming. No, and what they use the paid spare buses, if one breaks down, mm -hmm. the other LLC members call, hey, I need to rent that bus, and that's what it's used for. Any other questions? Okay. Recommend the board approve Mr. Aaron Michi to Michi to purchase a new used bus from the 2024 school year to replace bus 4616, which will be used as a paid spare fiscal impact PVA budget source FY24. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You knew it was 4614. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> he went to sit back down. <laughs> One more time. That's funny. Good evening. Once again, um, bring before you tonight the approval of legal services to, on a five-year rotation basis or a contract. So we're seeking the approval of legal services for Queen Anne's County Board of Education. On April 21st, 2023, the procurement office issued a solic solicitation for cooperative seal bids as a request for proposals, RFP 2023-1 for our district legal services. The purpose was for a qualified law firm or individual to provide services of counsel to Queen Anne's County Board of Education. Um, on June 5th, the sealed bids were opened and reviewed by the evaluation team. The evaluation was scored using a rubric that had two sections. The first section was a technical portion to include background, qualification of personnel, approach to satisfying the requirements and fiscal integrity. The second section was the financial and cost evaluation. This section focused on the cost to include hourly rates in all levels of services with um, other costs. Um, Penson Katz Law PA was a high score. The terms of the agreement are three um, years upon satisfactory services by mutual agreement. The Board of Education of Queen Anne's County would also reserve the right to renew the contract. The renewal shall not exceed two one year renewal periods of each contract. Any comments or questions? I mean, you and I were part of it. I thought it was a good process. And 
That's what it came out, came out. Recommend that the board approve Cats Law PA and the contract for legal services beginning July 1st, 2023. Fiscal impact dependent on services provided. Budget source FY24 unrestricted, unrestricted operating budget. Been talking okay. too much. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, citizen participation. Did anyone else sign up or want to speak? Did you want to make a mention Yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Dennis. We did receive um, a letter from a student who was uh, commenting on offering um, home ec as one of our classes, part of our curriculum. And it is noted and put into the record. Um, and we appreciate very much the time and effort that um, the student took to reach out to us. And so thank you very much for that reminder. Um, any other comments? I have a question. So I don't know who did it, but the magnets that sent, uh, got sent out for the schedule last year, whose ever idea that was amazing. Are we doing that again this year? I think that was Good that. Too. That's credit goes. Is it <laughs> goes to land at Power Waters? Okay, oh, yes, they were <laughs> That wasn't we'll that, 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 I mean, that, that was, was awesome. a great. Oh my God! Mm -hmm. Yeah, stuck it right on the fridge, yeah. and it was there. Now the only <laughs> so, thing, the only comment I heard was, could we do a Spanish edition too? And I think that that was mentioned, and I believe she was pursuing that. I can yeah. we'll, we'll follow up. I mean, it was a great idea. Yeah. Oh, go amazing! Ahead. We're gonna like start, who? I'm like whoever start. thought of this. If it's not, you're genius. Always, yeah, uh, yeah it was, I know. Why the crowd pleaser, as Lynette says? <laughs> yes. yes, it was. Yes. Very much so. Okay. Any other comments? Is worthless. Yes. <laughs> Public or otherwise. Right. Okay. Yep. Uh, future meetings and events. Our next uh, regular, well, our next work session will be June 21st at 5 p.m. Our next regular board meeting will be July 12th. July 12th, we skipped that holiday weekend um, for our regular board meeting. Uh, anybody have comments or questions about those? Dates okay? Okay, can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> All, All right, thank you. Thank you very much.